Hello and welcome to Physicality Therapies and our Pilates sessions. Today we're going to do a nice session based on um, a full body workout. It's going to be quite intense, a um, little bit of sort of an intermediate level workout. Um, we're going to do some moves in there that you might find a bit difficult, but I'm going to give you sort of progressions and adaptations as we go along to try and make it fun. Um, it's a nice mix of, of everything, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So we're going to start off with our warm-up, so uh, we're going to start off just with our feet shoulder width apart on our mat. You want to make sure you set yourself, so make sure that pelvis, imagine that bucket, is tipped into a nice neutral position. You want to make sure that those shoulder blades are nice and wide, those shoulder collarbones, sorry, are nice and wide, shoulder blades tucking down into your back pockets. And from there, we're going to start off with our hands like this, we're going to go into our dumb waiter. So from there, we're going to start to twist out and back, out and back. So again, making sure those shoulder blades are nice and wide. Don't be tempted to move those shoulders up. We're just going to start off nice and gently, get nice and fast as we go. So this is a bit of an arms and shoulders sort of workout, really, um, to start off with. But we do incorporate some sort of lower lower leg stuff um, and, and some some um, sort of glutes work so if you've got some sciatic pain or some um, lower back pain this should work out quite well for you as long as your pain's resolving if you're in a sort of acute phase of pain um, look for something a bit more low level see how it goes first so then from our done waiter we're now going to progress that a bit so we're going to go into cleopatra so from that position we're now going to extend our arms and tip so imagine you've got little cups of water on your hands and you're going to extend out, extend out and tip. Come back in. So we're going to twist out, elbows extend, tip our hands out and come back in. So you want to remain nice and central as we do this. We're just going to tip out and back. It's a nice little warm up, not too much for the coordination here. Just gets those arms stretching and working. So try and really stretch as you do it. There we go. And do a couple more of those. And back. And one more. Out. And back. Now, if you stand at the end of your mat, we're going to go into our roll down. So we're going to roll down onto our front. So if, if any of you have seen our previous videos, roll downs, really, really important to imagine that your spine is like either a stack of blocks or a string of pearls. You're moving one tiny little vertebrae at a time. So you're looking first to tuck your chin under to make that neck uh, come down. And then we slowly roll in down. Hands follow just down the legs. You may need to bend your legs, bend your knees as you get to the bottom just to help with that mobility. And then we're going to come back up. So if you feel it a bit tight as you do this, just remember to bend those knees a little bit and that will give you that mobility to get those fingers down. Then come back up and this time we're going to do a full roll down. So we're going to roll right the way down then we're going to walk those hands out and we're going to end up in this high kneeling position so from this position we're now going to go into our rolled our press up from our roll down so what we're going to do from that is you're just going to do a press up from your knees just to again get these shoulders working so hands shoulder width uh, well, a bit wider than shoulder width apart sort of mat width apart you want your knees to be nice and far back we're going to do this press up from our knees so from here you're just going to lower yourself down and back up now if you can't if you find that too difficult and can't do that you can go down onto your elbows and come back up like that or you can even do it from your elbows so you can go down and back down and back which some people find easier if you're finding that too easy you normally do press ups from the floor by all means do it from the floor we want five of whatever you're doing so that's one two three 
four and five. Brilliant. And we're just going to roll back onto our heels now into a nice stretch. Keep those arms out in front of us. We're going to roll back into our rest position stretch. And just hold that. One, two, three. And come back into your sort of high kneeling or high plank position as it's actually commonly known as. So again, you want that back nice and straight. And you're just setting yourself so that you're, you're sort of resting on your knees and your, and your shins. And you're just sort of resting there. What you first you're going to do now is you're going to tuck your toes under. So I'm just going to reverse myself around so that you can see what I'm going to do. From this position, you're going to tuck your toes under and we're going to go into our knee hovers. So from here, you're just going to push up a little bit through your toes, take the weight through your arms and you're going to hover your knees. Like that. Keep going with that, reset yourself as needed. Make sure that your back just isn't arching like this. Make sure you keep a nice neutral position and just push up and down. Up, exhale and down. And inhale as you come down. Exhale up, inhale down. Exhale up, inhale down. Brilliant. So that's quite that's quite a hard exercise. If you've if you've managed that, that's great. If you're struggling, just do one or one or a couple of those, just to really get everything work. It really works those shoulders. It really works sort of the control around your hips and your abs to keep yourself up in that position. So from there, we're going to extend our legs out and we're going to come down onto our front. Cross your hands in front of you and set yourself up. So again, imagining that tailbone or you're tucking it under, you're bringing it out. Just imagine you get in that neutral position. It's quite difficult to find in this, in this um, position where you're on your front. Try and find that neutral position. Try and get your legs sort of shoulder width apart, nice and extended. Your arms just nice and relaxed and your head's going to go on your arms. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our swimming level one. So from there, we're going to start with our swimming legs. So we're going to extend one, extend the other, extend one, extend the other. And we're going to go into that position. So try and keep that pelvis neutral as you're doing this. So if you have to slow this right down in order to get that pelvis neutral, that's absolutely fine. So. This is control. So we're aiming to get that control around those hips and around that pelvis. So we're trying to push that control. Brilliant. And from there, we're starting with that control. We're going to progress that a little bit now. And what we're going to aim to do is we're going to aim to put our arms out in front of us and extend the opposite arm and the opposite leg. Opposite arm, opposite leg. This is moving into our swimming level three. So we're just extending both the arm and the leg out in unison. Again, keep that head down, chin tucked. So we're extending out, opposite arm, opposite leg. So you don't want to see like that. You want to extend the opposites. And again, it's about keeping that control. So we're going to do a few more of these. Really extend out. Look to really push. Imagine you're pushing a button in front of you with your fingertips. Imagine you're touching the wall behind you with your leg. You can extend out. Brilliant. Another two. Brilliant. And then from there, we're going to move this into a bit more of a, a bit more of a sort of neck control exercise, upper body control. We're going to move into our breaststroke level one. 
Now for this, what's good, it's sort of two phases of movement. So our legs are staying completely still this time. What you're doing is you've got your arms by your side. We're going to extend these arms out as we come up and then pull them back in and go down. So that's, our, that's what we're aiming to do. And you're aiming to do a, a nice sort of circle with your arms. So we're aiming to reach out as we come up, circle back and down. Reach out as we come up our neck, circle back and come down. So as you lift your neck, you're looking to just lift your head. Just lift your head and your upper body ever so slightly. So you're looking to again keep that neck length as we go out and then down as we come back. Out, down as we come back. Out and back. Out and back. And do another few of these. So here's one. Here's two. And here's number three and our final one. Brilliant. So from there, we're now going to have a nice stretch in this position. So from this position, we're going to go into our Cobra stretch. So again, keeping those arms um, by, by sort of your head and you're just going to stretch up. Again, keeping those elbows soft. All that work should be coming from your back. You're really forcing your back up into that extended position. You're going to come back down. And we're going to go up and you're going to come back down and we're going to do one more up and back down. And then from there, we're now going to go onto our side. Doesn't matter which side you go onto, we're going to do both. So you want to get yourself in a line on the mat. So. You want your hips, your feet, and your shoulder all in line across this bottom part of your mat is the easiest way to line yourself up sort of at an edge of your mat. From this position, you want to make sure that your knees are bent to a sort of 90 degrees. So that's sort of a right angle and L shape. Hips to about 45, so just under that, it's about half of an L shape. And then from there, you're going to set yourself so this arm here, you want to be nice and long and you want to just sort of lengthen this part of your spine. And that's the easiest way to sort of explain it. What you're actually doing is you're creating a little gap under here, under this side of you. So you're just creating that little gap so that you then set yourself in this position. While we're in this position, we're going to start off with our clam level one. So our clam level one just involves keeping our feet, heels uh, together and you're just going to roll up and down from that top leg. Up and down. Just going to do this. All that movement should be coming from this bottom. So this hip bit here should be staying pretty much completely still. Don't want any sort of rocking on your hips. Doing all that work from your, your glute muscle, which is in this, in your bottom. I'm just going to keep doing this again. doesn't matter how far up you get. If you can get to there, but your, your pelvis is wobbling, that's no good. You're looking for that control. So you're looking to keep everything in, in line as you do that. And as you, and as you keep everything in line, you will start to feel that, that movement is, is tiring out that muscle. It's a muscle we don't use that often, but it's one that's really, really important, especially for our walking and things like that, and especially in sort of back pain. It gets very, very weak very easily. Um, and, if it gets, and if it gets sort of weak and tight, um, it can cause sort of um, a lot of problems in terms of pain. So, moving that. 
and then from there we're going to go into our level three so our level three is just us lifting both feet off the mat so you want you want them um just sort of in line again with this top hip it's not too high you don't want to be up here you just want to be sort of in line with that top hip and again you're going to peel that top leg off and you'll feel the difference there that different muscles now have got to kick in to keep you stabilized and again if you can only go to there and that's and that's as much control as you've got that's fine as we go through these sessions you build that control up this is what's really good about sort of our tailored programs that we run here at physicality therapies what we can do is is really work on those sort of weak points and really work to get to get your control there so you get you get your sort of satisfaction out of these sessions and really put and really be able to push yourself so um definitely check those out they're all bookable on our website our classes uh, and also our Pilates one-to-one -one sessions as well um, to work on any specific issues. But our classes tend to be sort of a week-by-week um, week week programme um, for the people in that class to really progress them on. So from there, we're now going to progress that and move over to our other side. So from our other side again, get on that other side. And again, you want to be in that nice position along the back of that mat. Align yourself up, knees at 90, heels and feet in line with the mat. Keeping those hips again about 45 degrees. So just drop them down a bit if they're a bit high. And from there, elongating that top hip so that you feel a little gap being created under your side, sort of down by your pelvis. Uh, make sure that you're not too sort of tilted forwards or backwards. Make sure you're nice and in line. Sometimes it's good to have somebody there to tell you about this, um, to tell you how you are in line. Um, can be quite difficult when you first start. So from there, again, we're just going to peel that top leg up. Peel that top leg up. do about five more of these so that's one two three four and five and then from there what you're gonna do is we're just gonna pop our feet up again so again um, in line with this top hip not too high not too low either nice nice distance and again peel up and this is that difficult move it's really going to hit all these stability muscles and you can see that it takes a lot it takes a lot of muscles to be involved so I purposely made myself a bit more wobbly this time so hopefully you should see sort of everything kicking in so everything that we want to stabilize so again what you're looking to do is you're looking to stabilize everything as you come up as you go down as well you're looking not to drop or go really fast with that just try and do a nice controlled movement again that hip really shouldn't be moving too much forwards or backwards so we're going to do another five of these so one two three four and five and then roll back on to your front there okay and then from there we're now going to roll back so that we are on to our um onto our first side and then we're going to do an arm opening so basically from this from the position that we're in on our sides here we're going to we're going to put our arms out like this in front of us and you're just going to follow it with your neck as you peel it over to the other side and this time you're keeping all those hips nice and stacked so you're keeping everything stacked nothing should be moving 
apart from the top of your body and that arm and fold it back. Follow it and back. And follow it and back. And if you can only get to here before everything stops, before everything starts moving down here, so you're going like this, that's fine. Again, it's about pushing that move over time, progressing it, getting that movement so it flows. So um, in Pilates, a lot of it is about flow. So a lot of it is about moving, moving with a nice flow as you're doing things because that is a stabilized movement. So we're gonna move back onto our other side. Again, it's just to give ourselves a little break um, between sides. And it just gets that roll in motion in as well. So again, keeping those hips stacked. And we're just going to follow that arm with your neck, coming back. So it's a nice stretch as we get into this position and coming back. I'm going to do another three this side, one, two, three, brilliant. And then from this position, we are now be on our backs. So from our backs and this position, we are going to move now into looking at our chest and looking at our abs. So from this position here, we are going to look at a chest lift. So this is part of our, our sort of abdo prep. So uh, we're gonna move into um, chest lift and abdo prep. So from this position here, so you wanna make sure again, you've set that pelvis, you've took that tailbone under. Again, those collar blades are melting down into, into your back pockets. Now we're going to start just to lift up. So this is our abdo prep. So you're just going to slide your hands up, come back down. Slide up and back down. So again, you can imagine you're just peeling up and peeling down. Keeping that space. Imagine you've got a peach here between your chin and your chest. And you're just going to roll up and down. And down, up and down, up and down. I'm going to do three more. One, two, three. Brilliant. So from this position that you, that you're in now, what we what we're going to do is we're going to start off by doing our our chest lift. So our chest lift is just literally lifting up. So the same as our abdo prep, apart from all you're doing, is just lifting slightly less. So we're just lifting our chest up off the mat. So it's sort of half an abdo prep. It's a nice little break between sort of our abdo prep and in a minute we're gonna go into our oblique prep. So it's just literally lifting ever so slightly, curling up. That's all we're doing. Brilliant. So from here now, I'm going to go into our oblique prep. So this is again, it's part of your core. We're going to really target this. It's really good for, um, for that lower back pain, but also sort of stabilizing. So our core is like a, is a, is like a corset around us. It stabilizes us. So the more we can do to strengthen that core, the better it is for sort of everyday life really because it, it controls a lot of your posture and things like that so these muscles that we're targeting are sort of your postural muscles and your control muscles as well so all these muscles form that corset around you so in order to target sort of the sides of that we need to go to the side so our oblique prep is quite simply an abdo prep but we're going to the side so we're taking this your first shoulder whichever shoulder you're going with first you're going to take that over to the opposite hip 
like that. So again, elongate in that neck and peel it up one at a time. Try and get into a nice rhythm as you do this. This makes it a lot easier than feeling like you're struggling. If you are struggling, just don't go as high. The important thing is that is that twist. So if you're twisting like this, just getting that top shoulder off the mat, that's completely fine. If you can push it a bit more, look to push it that bit more. Look to challenge yourself, push yourself that bit more. You'll get, you'll get that mobility and you'll get that control over your movement. That's why sort of a lot of people are quite static with their Pilates work. They don't tend to sort of push themselves. That's why some, for some people it can feel quite boring. The whole point is pushing yourself, building those moves up. That's something that's quite easily done at home. Um, very minimal equipment. We do all hours with, with no equipment whatsoever so we can show you what you can achieve by doing no equipment. Now we finish that speech, you will reach the end of your abdo prep and your oblique prep. So now we're just going to sit here and take a few breaths. Just to get our breath back there. And then from there, we're now going to go into our bridge. So, um, for those of you who've seen it before, I love shoulder bridge. It's a great exercise. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Today, we're not really doing a lot with, with our shoulder bridge. We're just going to do a basic bridge and we're going to sort of progress it in a few different ways. So our shoulder bridge is essentially this. So all you're doing is you're rolling up. So we're going to first practice that. So one vertebrae at a time, you're just going to sort of tuck your, collar, your uh, tailbone under and you're going to slowly raise yourself up onto your shoulders. And then we're going to come back down in the same controlled way. And again, this is all about that control. So really work on that control of rolling up. Again, it should look fluid. It should look like it's a nice, easy, fluid motion up. And the same down. Just nice and simple. And those knees should not be knocking together. They should be coming... They should be staying as they are. Imagine you've got a cake or two on top of each. And those cakes are going to be your tea, so you don't want to move, you don't want to lose those. And we're going to come back down. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go up into our bridge and we're going to hold. So we're going to go up into our bridge and hold that. So one, two, three, four, and five back down and again we're going to open to our bridge and hold one two three four and five and back down and then one more so we're going to go up into our bridge hold one two three four five and back down this time we're going to really test our supporting leg and also our abdominal core. So this time we're going to go up, we're going to hold, we're also going to float one leg up. Now the trick to doing this, if you're starting to wobble everywhere, is push through that supporting leg, really push it down into the ground as you hover that leg up. And then as it comes back down, gently shift that weight back. So we're just going to do one leg first and get that control. So you want it to be in that sort of 90 degree position and back down. If that bridge is starting to wane, roll yourself down and roll yourself back up. Get in that position. And leg up and down. Leg up and down. And what we're now going to do is we're going to tap that leg. So it's going to come up, tap, tap, tap and down and roll your bridge down well done so now we're going to do the same with the other leg so we're going to roll up into our bridge and float your opposite leg to the one you're just doing up and down and now we're going to go into your taps float that leg up one 
two, three, and down. So with your taps, with your leg, you want to make sure that that tap's coming from that hip. So don't extend your knee and try and tap your heel. You want that tap to come to your toe, so that knee really isn't doing a lot. It's all coming from that hip hinge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back up into our bridge. We're going to alternate between our feet now. So we're going to really push these hips. So up into our bridge. And we're going to float one leg up. Tap. 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 Hold that bridge. Float the other leg up. Tap. 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 And hold that bridge. One, two, three, four, five, and roll that back down. And then from there, we're going to go into a bit of a fun stretch now. So bring both your legs up towards your chest and just roll forwards, backwards, side to side, keeping that control and just rolling yourself around. Just a nice little finisher. It's a Pilates move that isn't really used that often, called rolling like a ball. And you're just going to roll yourself like that. Roll yourself back up into this nice seated position. From here, we're just going to do um, another stretch just for your hips. So I want your feet together. What you're going to do is just drop one hip out. So try and keep your foot on the floor. As you drop it out, just gently push on it. You should feel a bit of a stretch in there, just along there. Roll that back in. Same with the other one. You just feel that stretch as you push it out. And that is our Pilates class for today. It's a nice mixed one. Um, we'll say there's things you can do to make that harder, there's things you can do to make that easier. Um, and it's just, it's just a nice one that you can do at home with no equipment. Um, all you need is a mat or even just a towel um, just, to, just to sit yourself down. You may find it easier for especially some of sort of the oblique preps, the um, bridges and things like that. Well, um, you shouldn't be bridge, but for sort of your oblique preps, your abdo preps, your chest lifts, having a little pad behind you. For your bridge you do need to take that out otherwise um, you get too much um, extension through your neck which uh, can cause that to be a bit painful. Hope you've enjoyed this please subscribe and uh, turn notifications on for the channel uh, it really helps us grow. Um, again leave some comments um, let us know what you thought um, let us know if there's specific things that you want to work on um, we are um, sort of getting um, content out as much as we can um, so let us know and uh, it's more fun to to make stuff for you guys that um, you really enjoy so we will see you next time 